Thank you for joining us on Synthesis Workshop. On today's Research Spotlight episode, we're joined by Aliyah Shamil. Aliyah got her Bachelor's in Pharmaceutical Sciences from the University of Michigan, where she carried out medicinal chemistry research in the Garner Lab and also worked in photoredox catalysis in the Stevenson Lab. Currently, she's pursuing her PhD at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where she works in the Wiccans Lab. And from there, I'll hand the floor over to you, Aliyah. Thank you very much for joining us to talk about your work. Thank you, Matt, for the introduction. Today, I'll be talking about electron prime photoredox catalysis, and specifically my recent paper out in JAX, in which we discover how to turn on potent photoreductant reactivity by taking a more careful look at the radical intermediates generated in situ. The Wiccans group has three broad areas of interest, which include generating open shelled catalysts that can then promote challenging single electron transfer events, as well as using both electrochemistry and photochemistry to maintain our catalytic cycles, and finally, generating and controlling reactive intermediates. So we have these two broad research programs that we've established thus far in our group, one of which is electron prime photoredox catalysis, and the other is alkene functionalization using this dye cation pool strategy. So this talk is going to focus on electron prime photoredox catalysis. So we're going to start off with an introduction to electron prime photoredox catalysis. So starting with our neutral ground state catalyst, that can undergo a single electron reduction to generate the catalyst radical anion. And so this electron can come from either electrochemical or photochemical means, or even just a chemical reductant in general. But once we generate this catalyst radical anion, this is now a photocatalyst that can undergo subsequent photoexcitation to generate a highly energized potent reductant in solution. So the use of catalyst radical anions as photocatalysts was really pioneered by the Koenig group in 2014, in which he showed that upon photoexcitation, the excited state can undergo a single electron reduction by an alkylamine to generate this catalyst radical anion. Then this radical anion can undergo subsequent photoexcitation to generate a potent reductant in solution that can then reduce challenging substrates. However, this consecutive photoinduced electron transfer method is quite mechanistically complex because it requires generating two different excited states. As well, it requires finding a chemical reductant that can both generate your catalyst radical anion but also does not have interfering byproducts after its oxidation. Our group's approach was to completely simplify the left half of this catalytic cycle and instead use electrochemistry to selectively reduce our catalyst to the catalyst radical anion by applying a mild cathodic potential. And then the remainder of the catalytic cycle remains the same. And so this approach is much more mechanistically simple. And this is the approach that we initially took to explore radical anion photocatalysts. In our initial report, we used this naphthalmonoamid structure as our catalyst, and we used it to promote the challenging reduction of aryl chlorides to generate aryl radicals. We chose to target aryl chlorides because when we look at the commercially available aryl halides, we see that more than two thirds of this market are aryl chlorides. However, when looking at established aryl radical precursors, we see that they've often been limited to much more easily activated substrates, including aryl diazonium salts, aryl iodides, and aryl bromides, whereas the more challenging to activate aryl chlorides are largely beyond the scope of traditional methods. Which is why we chose to target these aryl chlorides as our substrates and these aryl radicals as our intermediates. We were able to engage these aryl radicals in intermolecular coupling reactions, including heteroarylation as well as phosphonylation. And with this method, we demonstrated that we can tolerate electron-rich aryl chlorides, which are much more challenging to activate, as well as being able to tolerate reducible functional groups, despite the fact that we're able to promote such challenging reductions. Having established our proof of concept, we next aim to leverage this system to identify new classes of radical anion photocatalysts. And we specifically chose to target quaternary aniline salts as our substrates because of the challenging fragmentation of the carbon-nitrogen bond. 
So first we started with our naphthal monoamide photocatalyst that we had previously used, and we see a modest yield at about 42%. And so next we decided to investigate catalysts that had similar core structures. And we see primarily a decrease in reactivity, with the exception of the imidazole catalyst. We next investigated other organic structures that could potentially serve as radical anion photocatalysts, and we see modest reactivity out of phenazine and fluorinone. However, still not much more improved than the naphthal monoamide. We were also interested to see if more common photocatalysts could also act as radical anion catalysts, such as iridium and ruthenium-based ones. And we see that there is some reactivity, however, again, still not improved from our original catalyst. Finally, we looked at photocatalysts with the isothalonitrile core, and we saw a significant boost in reactivity, with the highest boost being with the diphenylamine derivative, which led to nearly quantitative conversion of our substrate to our desired product. So far, we've seen that electrochemistry is a great tool to selectively generate catalyst radical anions. And we've also seen that this technology has enabled us to discover a variety of new radical anion photocatalysts, including this 4-DPA IPN. And you may recognize this photocatalyst and that it's often used as a photooxidant, in which this catalyst undergoes photoexcitation, followed by single electron reduction to generate the catalyst radical anion. And then that is proposed to then reduce substrates to go back to the neutral ground state catalyst. However, we were curious as to why this radical anion photoactivity has yet to be demonstrated in the literature, considering it's such a commonly used photocatalyst. This made us increasingly interested in seeing if we can excite this catalyst radical anion to access this highly potent reductant reactivity under traditional photoredox conditions, thereby unlocking this sort of hidden level of photoredox catalysis. And we believe that the key to turning on this reactivity will be finding the ideal chemical reductant that allows us to tap into this sort of photoreductant reactivity. We began our investigations with the reduction of chlorobenzene because its reduction potential is beyond most of traditional photoredox as well it is greater than a volt uphill for the specific 4-DPA IPN catalyst. We began by using alkylamines as our reductant because these are the most common reductants used in reductive photoredox catalysis. And we were excited to see that they did promote the desired reduction, although in quite low yields. And we hypothesize that this is because upon oxidation of the amine, we generate an amine radical cation, which is now a mild oxidant. Which with respect to our catalytic cycle, we can see that having an oxidant can potentially deactivate our catalyst back to the neutral ground state and thereby preventing the electron primed half of the cycle. To circumvent this, we hypothesize that formate would be a much better suited reductant for the desired chemistry. And this is because upon oxidation, followed by second order decomposition, we can generate the CO2 radical anion. And this CO2 radical anion is actually quite a strong reductant itself. Now we've generated a byproduct that can actually promote our catalytic cycle by activating our catalyst rather than deactivating it. And we were really excited to see that when we subjected formate to our reaction conditions, we see 70% conversion of our chlorobenzene to our desired dehalogenated product. We were also able to show that this reductive system is able to promote a variety of different intermolecular coupling reactions, including borylation, phosphonylation, and hydroaerylation to generate phenethylamines, as well as hydroaerylation of unactivated olefins. We can also see that we can tolerate electron-rich aryl chlorides, as well as aryl chlorides that are electron deficient with reducible functional groups. And we can also tolerate medicinally relevant heterocycles, including morpholine and pyridine. Next, we sought to investigate the mechanism of this system, and we primarily used absorption spectra for these studies. So first, we started with having our catalyst and formate in our cuvette in the dark, and we see the following UV-Vis spectrum, of our neutral ground state catalyst. 
We then hypothesize that upon irradiation in the presence of formate, we should be able to generate our catalyst radical anion. And in fact, upon irradiation, we see this clear change in the UV vis spectrum, primarily with increase in features around 280, 350, and 550 nanometers. And when conducting this experiment electrochemically, selectively reducing our catalyst, we see the same features present in the UV vis spectrum, indicative that we are indeed generating the DPA radical anion upon exposure with formate and light. We next sought to investigate the second half of our catalytic cycle, in which the catalyst radical anion requires light in order to reduce our aryl chloride. So now starting with the UV vis spectrum of our catalyst radical anion, we doped in some chlorobenzene and we saw no change in the UV vis spectrum, indicating that the DPA IPN radical anion ground state is not capable of reducing chlorobenzene on this time scale. However, upon irradiation, we see a clear change in the structural features, which are consistent with reverting back to our neutral ground state catalyst indicative that we need light in order to reduce chlorobenzene from the catalyst radical anion. We've now identified that there are multiple plausible reductants being generated in our catalytic cycle that could potentially be responsible for our substrate reduction, one of which is the DPA radical anion in the ground state, and the other is it in the excited state, as well as the CO2 radical anion. However, based off of the UV vis data that we just went over, we've ruled out that the 4-DPA IPN radical anion in the ground state can reduce our aryl chloride. So our two most plausible reductants are either the excited state DPA radical anion or the CO2 radical anion. In order to probe this, we looked at a variety of electronically different aryl chlorides, ranging from electron deficient, electron neutral, and electron rich. In order to investigate the viability of CO2 radical anion acting as a reductant, we chose to use this disulfide in place of our photocatalyst. And then upon irradiation, the disulfide should be able to homolyze to generate the thiol radical, which can undergo a hydrogen atom abstraction with formate to generate the CO2 radical anion. And so under these conditions, we saw full conversion of the electron deficient aryl chloride, which is much easier to reduce. However, when moving to more challenging electron neutral or electron rich aryl chlorides, we see much lower conversion of our substrate. However, when looking at our standard conditions using our 4-DPA IPN photocatalyst, we see high yields for all of the aryl chlorides, including electron rich. And so based off of this data, we believe that these reductants have multiple roles in the catalytic cycle. Our catalyst radical anion can act as a photoreductant to reduce the aryl chloride to generate the aryl radical. And CO2 radical anion can potentially be activating our catalyst to get us back to the catalyst radical anion. However, we see for easier to reduce substrates, CO2 radical anion could potentially be directly reducing our substrate which means that the byproduct of our reductant can either promote the catalytic cycle or promote the overall transformation. Today, I've demonstrated our group's contributions to electron prime photoredox catalysis, and our group, as well as many others, are still actively investigating these systems and trying to discover what new chemistry can be enabled by this technology. In addition, our group has investigated very similar systems, however, in the oxidative mode, in which we use a conventional photoreductant and use it to elicit potent photooxidation reactivity. And we've also repurposed the CO2 radical anion that's generated with 4-DPIPN and used that to undergo hydrocarboxylation reactions. With that, I'd like to thank the entire Wiccans group, as well as all of our funding sources. And finally, I'd like to thank you, Matt, for having me on the Synthesis Workshop. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in for this Research Spotlight episode, and thank you to Aaliyah for sharing your work with us. If you enjoyed the episode, you can support us by subscribing and telling your peers about this podcast, and feel free to send us any questions or comments you have. Follow us on Twitter to stay up to date, and see you all next time.